Hey guys, it's uh, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and we're continuing on with the uh, Kenneth Wells engine build. Alright, so in the last uh, in the last video I made these firebox ends. Uh, they fit pretty good. I've sort of uh, assembled the engine a little bit. You know, this sort of motivates me and kind of encourages me, encourages me to keep going and that sort of thing. So let me get this out of the way. Alright, so the next part to continue are the firebox sides and the tie rods and there's a strap to hold the boiler down then a little bracket that gets uh, fastened to the strap so I think uh, I have all my material cut out this is the stainless for the boiler strap uh, here are my four tie rods um, there's my little bracket or piece of metal for my bracket here and then I got two pieces of stainless cut for the boiler sides uh, I, I want to throw out another thanks uh, to Patty for the uh, metric rules. It did make uh, marking out my uh, rough stock uh, a whole lot easier than trying to convert everything to, to decimal and, and all that sort of, uh, or to uh, imperial and that sort of stuff. Okay, so I think what I want to start with is uh, the sides. Here we see that um, there's a six millimeter bend on each end and there's four uh, holes that are uh, in there for ventilation. So um, let me get uh, let me get some preliminary marks on the uh, on the plate for the sides, and uh, we'll get started. Now there's a good side here that has some plastic on it to help protect it, and and then then another side that's not as good. So we'll uh, go with that. So let me get uh, things set up, and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have some uh, sharpie on my plate here to mark. I have my first uh, height set to six millimeters. So I want to mar mark the bottom and the top bend lines here. So hopefully my hands aren't in the way. Okay, there's one. And two. I'm going to go ahead and mark the other plate here. Excuse my arm. I'm here. Okay, so the bend lines are made uh, on these two plates. Uh, I got a little carried away with the Sharpie on that one, didn't I? Um, so I'm going to set the uh, I'm going to set a reference line to uh, 35 millimeters uh, to mark along here, so that I can mark the vent holes. So let me get that set up, and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, I have the height gauge set to 35 millimeters. Now I'm going to put a reference line. So I can mark my vent holes. And hopefully my hands aren't getting in the way. Okay, so those are marked. And uh, so now all I need to do is mark for the uh, every 25 millimeters for um, for the vent holes. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll, I'll bring you in when I'm done and uh, meet you over at the drill press to drill some holes. Okay, so the only thing I've done with this plate is I drilled some eighth inch pilot holes. Got a little excited and forgot about the camera. So let's get some oil on here. And I want to go to the second step of my step bill, which is our step drill, which is 25 64 All right, let's do this. Got a little bit of chatter. around get the other two. And hopefully my arms aren't in the way. All 
right, those holes are drilled. So um, they do have a pretty good burr on the back. So I'm just going to flip them over and use the same bit and deburr them. That should uh, have those. All right, so I'll uh, do the next one exactly the same way, and uh, I'll bring you back in back over at the bench. Okay, so we have our plates, our uh, firebox side plates that are drilled and deburred, and um, so next we have um, these two bends to put on there. Now you guys have seen me bend stuff before so I'm going to set up my little break which is kind of tedious anyway and I'll get these two plates here bent in and then I'll come back. And uh, I wanted to thank Patty again. Patty the uh, metric rules have been a huge help buddy. I, I appreciate uh, the donation to uh, the channel. Alright so let me uh, let me get the uh, break set up and and uh, get these bent and then we'll come back and, and see what we got to do next. Okay, I knew I said I was just going to do this and then bring you back in when I'm done, but I thought I would go ahead and yeah, cl at least clamp it down and show you one bend. This is my little cheap uh, Harbor Freight sheet metal break, and it's been suggested to me that I uh, do something to create a clamping bar up here or something a little better than fiddling around with C-clamps and stuff like that. So I have it in position, so we're going to bend it up, and hopefully you can see. I think it moved on me. All right, let's uh, let's see if we're anywhere close to square. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So that was as simple as that. <clears throat> Got the first bend in, and uh, so got got the first bend in there. So make sure you can see that. Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to bend the uh, other side and the other two sides of the other one, and then when I got them done, I'll bring you back. Okay, so both of these plates are bent and drilled, so they're pretty much done, other than I need to make a tool to dish these holes in, and I haven't made that tool yet. Probably won't be in this video. Uh, I still have to grind the uh, high-speed steel to a radius, and I need some practice at that. Uh, but they, uh, they come out same size, look pretty good, and uh, reasonably square. And uh, of course this one here I peeled the uh, plastic off of and this has still got the plastic on it. And of course I still got a bunch of mark out uh, Sharpie there that I need to clean off. But it's getting closer and that part is done uh, other than dishing the holes and we'll get to that. So uh, these pieces here um, go between the firebox ends like this. And then the tie rods that, are, that you see here uh, go through here and, and get a nut on each end and and that's uh, what forms the forms up the firebox and of course the strap comes over the top of the boiler. So I think the part that I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and do the tie rods. Um, uh, I need to put a thread on there. Um, of course it uh, called for uh, M3 or 5BA. I'm going to put a uh, 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 Imperial 540 thread on there uh, for about a quarter inch or so. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and mark the ends of the uh, 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 tie rods here that you know they're already cut to length I'll mark the ends um, to six millimeters and and then uh, when I'm ready to thread I'll see you over at the lathe okay I'm over at the lathe I have uh, one of my tie rods chucked in you can maybe you can pick up the little mark there that's the thread depth that I'm going to go it's about it's six millimeters or about a quarter inch I have a uh, 540 uh, die here and I'm just going to give this a little bit of that magic <clears throat> and feed this in and 
to get it started. going to go up to that line break my chips off there okay so there's the first one done and I'm going to tap uh, the other end of this one here and the other three tie rods exactly the same. So when I get them done, I'll meet you over at the bench. Okay, so the four tie rods are done. They're the same length. They're tapped on both ends. So uh, the next part here that I want to focus on, I think, is I'm going to go ahead and do the strap bracket. Now, the strap bracket is a piece of 16-gauge sheet metal. I have... Uh, I have a piece cut here to use for that. It has a radius on the end. It has two um, uh, 964 holes. Well, it would be three and a half, but these are clearance size for her eighth inch. And then it gets tapped. Uh, it's going to get tapped 540 uh, down in this hole here. So let me uh, let me get this marked up and uh, get ready to to lay it out. And I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so we, I need to make a six millimeter mark on either end, and hopefully my hand isn't in the way okay and I'll make it I'll make another mark um, 12 millimeters up and I'll put a center line so it could be punched I think I'm just going to be in the way on that so uh, let me uh, get this done and I'll meet you over at the drill okay so I have the piece all marked up and I got it sitting on a couple parallels and tapped down so I need two clearance holes for the uh, uh, for eighth inch, so it'd be uh, I think it's 964, so I'd have to look. But anyway, it's, this is the clearance size drill, and then this one over here is uh, on the very end is tap size for uh, number 540. So let's uh, let's get these drilled. Let me get a dab of oil on here and see what we got, and hopefully I don't get in the way. Should have held that down, huh? Okay, well, I'm going to change the drill out and um, drill this one here for tapping size uh, for number 540, and I'm going to deburr them, and then I'll meet you over at the vise to tap it out. So. I'll see you there in just a minute. Okay, so I got the uh, little piece put in the vise here. Let's see if I can square it up a little better here. All right, I'm slightly clamped, and I have a uh, 540 tap. I'm just going to put a little dab of tap magic there. Now, what I discovered a while ago is that uh, this is the smallest tap tap wrench that I have. So hopefully. Um, get this in here and hopefully my hand's not in the way let's get this tapped up All right. looks pretty square that way and that way okay I think we're good tapped. <clears throat> need to find a smaller tap wrench or make one for these little taps. I 
All right, I guess we can test it with the thread that we put on one of the tie rods. There it goes, that's good. Okay, so the, the next thing I need to do is round this edge. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, not really, but uh, I, I had put a little scribe on there for, for the edge. You can't hardly tell it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to file the corners off of this and make it round, and then we'll come back to the bench. Well, I messed this part up, guys. I uh, made the 6 millimeter mark there, there, and there. Uh, and, you know, these two holes here are drilled on the center line and those marks. This hole here, however, is probably half that distance. So it's, it's probably three millimeters uh, over. Um, and you see, if you can see, I drilled it on the six millimeter mark and I tapped it 540. So um, I'm going to have to make this part over. So rather than uh, making you guys uh, watch all that, I'll, uh, I'll make it and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've corrected my error. Uh, you'll see now that the uh, hole is out here on the end where it's supposed to be. I got the radius uh, on there. So the only thing left to do this piece is to break it at the six millimeter spot. So like you see down here, well, maybe you can. You can see there in the bottom of the drawing right here um, that it's broke so that the uh, thread can go through there. All right, so I'm just going to put that in the vise and uh, drive it over and, and uh, hope for the best. So I'll bring you in the vise and we'll see what happens. Uh, this is kind of thick material. It's, it's uh, 16 gauge, so it's almost 16th of an inch thick. So that's a little bit too much for uh, the little break that I bought. So this one here is probably going to have to be hammered. And if I ding it up, it won't be too bad because it's, it's, uh, it's unseen. So, all right, well, I'll see you at the, uh, I'll see you at the vise. Okay, I got the uh, I got the piece in the vise here, sitting on the line. I'm going to try tapping it over here. All right, I'm just going to tap on this edge a little bit. Okay, I might be just a hair over bent. I won't really know until I pull it out. So let's take a look. Okay, so that is just a little bit over bent. So I'll straighten that out a little bit and I'll, I'll work that and then we'll uh, come back into the, to the bench and see what we got to do next. So I'll catch you here in just a minute. Okay, well I have the piece made. So it's got, you know, I did straighten that bend out a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, one thing that I noticed, um, and this is, you know, I'm a newbie, and maybe some of you uh, uh, more experienced folks know this, but uh, when I bent this, right, now first of all, I want to thank Bob over at Bison Workshop, uh, the dead blow, uh, that was immensely much better than just using a ball peen. Uh, but anyway, when I bent this, this hole actually stretched a little bit, right, and I was using one of my, one of my tie rods here um, as, you know, just a test fit and so I had to uh, I had to retap that now that fits in there good but um, I had to retap that so if, if you're uh, if you're contemplating making this engine I think the safest thing to do would be to uh, make this bend and then uh, you know maybe clamp this in a vise and then drill this hole and tap it after you've bent it that way you don't have the elongation and I don't know if uh, the elongation kind of picks up there, but I was able to run the tap back through there and kind of chase out those threads a little bit and and uh, it, it works pretty good. And like I said, the uh, just using this uh, 540 thread that I put on the uh, tie rods, it screws in there and does pretty good. So, so we have the uh, the clamping part done, I guess uh, that the strap bracket is done, the tie rods are completed and the firebox sides are done except that I need to make a tool to dish the holes. Um, so the last remaining part is the boiler strap and hopefully I can get this in frame. Okay, is the boiler strap and it's uh, you know it's a half inch wide and 212 millimeters long. I've got the, uh, the stock uh, marked and cut. 
Uh, over here we have a bend line with a hole, a clearance hole for uh, uh, eighth inch. Uh, this, this is the end that will get uh, fastened down to the uh, bottom frame. And then there's a single hole over this end to, uh, where we're going to, um, it's got to be riveted. So I need to find something to use for rivets. I don't know if I got some, maybe some copper or something. I don't know. I have to, they call for aluminum rivets. I think somebody told me once and, and uh, I don't think I have any of those. But anyway, um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead. This, it's the same thing uh, again. I'm just going to uh, uh, mark this. Uh, drill the two holes and make the little bend and then I'll come right back. I mean you guys have already seen this. This is getting old hat and you're probably getting rather bored with it. So I'll uh, I'll be right back here in just a minute. Okay, so this piece has been drilled and it's been at the end. So I've been thinking about this uh, rivet thing, you know. I don't really have anything that size, but I do have pop rivets and you know what I think I think they'll work. So I'm not gonna this is all hidden, you can't see it anyway. So I'll put that in there and I'll pop rivet that down and I'll transfer the second hole. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I'll transfer the uh, second hole and drill it and then go ahead and put the second pop rivet in. And then this piece here is uh, essentially completed. So let me get that done and I'll come back in. I mean, surely you guys have all seen somebody pop rivet before. Um, let me get that done and let's let's come back in and let's, uh, let's, let's see what we got here and where we got to go. So. I'll uh, see you in just a minute. Okay, so I got the two pop rivets in there, and the only thing that I done to them is that uh, I filed them down a little bit where they protruded, and then sort of peened them over just to kind of give them a little bit of a lower profile. If you can see that, make them look a little bit better. It wasn't necessary, but you know, it's it's not a real rivet, you know, like I would think that you'd want to use in a model like this, but. Uh, it's what I had and I think it'll work. All right, so um, that pretty much concludes all these pieces. We've made the strap, we've made the strap bracket, the tie rods, and the sides, okay? So um, I do have some 540 nuts and I got some 540 screws. Uh, although I think maybe brass nuts would look better and I still have to make a dishing tool to dish these holes uh, out and um, to do that, I'm going to have to grind a radius tool, which I, I haven't done. So that's just some shop experience I'm going to get. Uh, and then, and then uh, I guess uh, when I get the tool done, I'll uh, come back and show dishing those out. So it looks to me like the uh, next bit to do is the uh, is the boiler. And uh, I don't have any silver solder. Um, I'm looking for some suggestions. So you know, remember, I'm new to this. Uh, is there a certain silver solder here in the U.S. that uh, you would suggest that I get and, and flux that goes with it? And uh, just let me know. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a trial fit of this and we'll see what it looks like and I'll bring you back in when I got it together. Okay, well all those components went together pretty good. So that's uh, it's coming along. I've just got the casting sitting out here. Uh, thanks again, Emma, for sending that along. I got the strap in and like I said, I need to dish the holes and I need to do some paint and and uh, I, I'm gonna uh, you know I've been watching a lot of Keith Appleton uh, over the last year or two and these uh, unsightly gaps that I have up here I think I'm gonna take some JB weld and uh, fill those in and then polish you know uh, sand them uh, a small radius on there and and then uh, once it's painted I, I don't think uh, you know they won't be so unsightly the other thing is I need to I really don't like these nuts um, they're a little bit large, so I need to find out, you know, a good size nut to use and, or, you know, good to cross flats and maybe get some brass and just make some nuts. I think it would, uh, would look a lot nicer in brass anyway. So for those of you curious, uh, this thing is about uh, nine and a quarter inches long. It's about uh, two and a half inches wide and it's about four inches tall, give or take. And uh, I want to thank Patty again for the uh, metric rules. They have come out, uh, they've been pretty handy on this project. So um, I think this is where I'm going to call this video uh, done. Um, I'll, I'll come back uh, later and, and show the dishing of these and after I get the tool made. Uh, next on the um, plans is the boiler. I think uh, I'm, I might uh, just take some 
advice and instead of making the uh, safety valve like it's outlined in here just buy a uh, safety valve which means I'll have to get some more taps and things like that uh, I need some information on silver solder I've never never done any uh, I have a, a map torch I, I hope that uh, I think that'd be hot enough to uh, to silver solder this up I do have a question though um, for you more experienced folks out there what kind of silver solder do I buy uh, for this for this application and what kind of flux do I need I'm in the United States so I don't you know I don't know if that uh, impacted or not I know I hear a lot about easy flow number two and this and that but I don't uh, I'm not sure where to get that or if it's even available to me without ordering it from uh, uh, Europe or somewhere so all right so uh, uh, thanks again for tuning in and watching um, this engine build and if you find it interesting please consider liking subscribing and sharing and tell your friends um, and other than that, have a blessed day.